a seller is looking for professional help and they decide to uh, you know, hire an agent to list their home, when they're signing that lease, con- uh, the seller's contract, um, what are some things that we should look out for or expect uh, from the agent when we're looking at signing? It's a really good question. I mean, uh, our marketplace, I always say, is, is just crazy. There is really no standard. I mean, we have so many different agents doing different things in the marketplace. Um, I always think the consumer always has this fear, right? I mean, there's everybody knows about a horror story in real estate. You know, a friend of a friend had this real estate agent and, you know, they didn't like what happened or, or what have you. So everybody does practice and operate a little bit differently. Um, I think the biggest thing that I've seen over the 16 years is <clears throat> it seems, at least for me, in my perspective, from seeing, you know, clients that come over to us or just clients just have no idea what's going on with the real estate transaction is um, agents aren't really held accountable in this in this business. I, I don't know if you guys feel like that is that is true or not. Um, it's more like, hey, let's kind of hope and pray this person does what they say they're going to do, you know, whether it's on the buyer side or the listing side. Um, I mean, I think everybody, if, if the agent is competent enough, they have their marketing package, hey, seller, this is what we're going to do. Uh, and then all it is, is hoping that we're going to get a buyer because of that, right? Put it into the MLS or put it into um, these different avenues of marketing, whether it's mailers, uh, social media marketing, you know, there's a long list of things that agents can do and spend money to, to do that. Um, but I think where we're a little bit different in terms of our industry, it's like, okay, here's, you sign the listing contract. We're going to go do what we said we were going to do. Maybe some agents don't do that. Um, but it's kind of like the next step is just kind of hoping that we get the, the buyer. And I think that's where the biggest fear for a lot of sellers come into play is because there is no certainty for them. So they're always kind of scared. And, and I think that comes back to, you know, what we had first originally talked about, spending that money to get the property ready and it may not sell the property. You know what I mean? Like a lot of sellers would be like, well, what if the property doesn't sell? I just did all of this stuff. Now I, I wasted money, you know? So I think the biggest thing that consumers should look at, especially when they're hiring a real estate agent is are there performance guarantees that the agent is offering? we kind of look at it almost from the standpoint of just anybody working at any regular corporate job, you know, especially in a sales position job, there are performances that you have to hit in order to maintain your job. If you don't do certain things, what happens, you might get written up. It continues to happen. You could get fired. We kind of put position ourselves in the same way as well too, with performance guarantees. It's like, Hey, we'll sell your property in X amount of days or we'll buy it right? Um, Another performance guarantee that we could do is, you know, we'll sell our property at X percent of list price, or we'll pay the seller the difference, right? Um, Or it could be, you know, we'll sell your home in X amount of days, or I pay you X amount of dollars if we're not able to, to do it. So it's now applying pressure on the agent, because majority of the time you sign a listing agreement, right? It's like, here's a duration of time that I have to sell. If I don't sell it, then okay, yeah, I lose maybe some money on marketing and some time involved. But if I actually have like written performances, if I don't do this, you get this, that will probably give the seller a lot more confidence in what the agents can do. Because I do think it takes a lot to be able to put something out there like that. No, I think that makes a big impact. If I know that my agent is going to help me guarantee a price, uh, then it's a no-brainer, right? I, I, I'm going to get the price that I want and this agent's going to cover it. So that guarantee is very strong. Um, so so is this a industry standard? Is there a lot of agents doing that nowadays? I don't find too many agents uh, doing it. I don't know about you guys. Mark or Way? No. Yeah. No, I do it's, think uh, it's a very unique kind of uh, product that some some agents are willing to do or, or or not willing to do. Yeah. No, that's that's uh that's again. I think as a as a seller, that brings comfort to know that 
this person is so confident in, uh, in their ability to be able to sell my home um, that he's going to guarantee and protect me by you know, buying my home for the price that um, is promised or he's going to pay it different. So I yeah. think if I was to choose an agent, one can offer that, one can't. Um, it, it's really a no-brainer that, uh, that I would choose uh, someone that's uh, guaranteeing. Could I also could I also throw out in this discussion that you know maybe another uh, another mistake that sellers make is by you know many you know many uh, smart sellers will definitely interview multiple agents. I, I would say that um, yeah the the ones that I would say one mistake that I see sellers making is simply going with the lowest commission. Right, right. now I'm not saying that we that you know we're we're the most expensive either. I'm not saying that as well, but I would say that you have to look at the whole package. And I think performance guarantee is one of those things. Track record as well as an, is another thing as well too. And, you know, just because you're simply going with the, you know, I think what we're alluding to here, Kevin, is that like, no, not all real estate agents are created equal, right? We are all doing different amounts. And, you know, there's a certain price that we, we our team charges and that we feel is like a fair amount. And that we also feel like we're gonna we're gonna hold up to our end of you know under the deal and get the get the house sold, and we're gonna put in a certain amount of time and money on our end to do the marketing as well too, and that's how we come up with the justification of our price. And I see, yeah. I see, I think I just see too many sellers just kind of shopping around and just going for the lowest commission rate, and that's not always gonna uh, you know produce you the best results. You know, you might be leaving actually more money on the table. You know, you might have saved money on the commission, but if your money, if your property is sitting out there longer on the market, or you're not able to, you know, get as much money because you know the marketing is just not as good, then you know it it shows. No, I mean, I I think it kind of alludes back to that whole overall. I mean, I think we touched on a lot of good different topics today, and I think that's where everything needs to kind of align and come together because I I do feel like sellers do think, yeah, this is a crazy market. We don't have to do anything in order to to sell property. That is very true. That specific statement, you don't have to do much to sell the property, but remember if it's our job and it's our duty to get the seller the highest price, we should do everything, use all the tools that we have available to us so then we can get you more money because selling it isn't the goal. Yeah, we know we can sell the property, but if you go with an agent that sells your property at a lower price compared to another agent that's going to sell it for a much higher price because of all the things that they do. I think that is something that you should definitely consider and look into because you could be leaving money on the table just because <clears throat> commission is cheaper. It doesn't mean that you're going to get the most amount of money in your pocket at the same time too, you know? So um, that's, that's, I think a really good point that, that you did bring up Mark. Yeah, it's, that, it's like that old saying, right? Uh, you, you get what you pay for. So sometimes paying for the cheapest commission or looking for that may not get the job done and um, paying a little bit more will actually get you more value uh, as you sell the home. Yeah, there's the other, there's the other uh, I guess, what, what uh, saying out there, uh, it takes money to make money as well too, right? No, that's a good one as well. Well, fellas, I think this was a great discussion. Uh, you know, for someone who's considered selling uh, the home, I, I learned a lot today. So I hope our viewers will do the same today as well. And um, Kevin, if uh, we want to look for you guys, you know, how can we, how can a, a seller come and uh, look for your team to uh, help us out? Yeah, uh, we'll leave uh, some links below for you guys. But, you know, YouTube, the Kevin Kwan Real Estate Group. My uh, Instagram handle is Kevin underscore, underscore Kwan. That's K-W-A-N underscore. Uh, Mark, wait, you guys can throw out your, your Instagram handles if you guys want as well, too. We'll put it in the comments as well, too. Got it. Uh, I'll shout out mine. Mine is uh, at Wei Quach, H-U-E-Q-U-A-C-H underscore uh, yep. Cool. Well, I look forward to uh, doing this again with all of you guys real soon. Uh, thanks for, for tuning in.